Nobody? Nothing exciting? Let's see. I heard some dad jokes today, but I'm, I'm scared of repeating them. We are now live on Facebook. Hey, everybody on Facebook. We are live in the Wealth and Real Estate Facebook group. And we're just talking real estate. We do this on Monday nights, just casually. We get together, just talk real estate. So happy, happy, happy Monday to everybody online. If you want to jump in the room, click the events uh, in the Wealth and Real Estate Facebook group, and you'll see the Zoom link. I'm also going to put it where you can see it right now as well in the feed to the channel. So Hopefully everybody is having a great Monday. Jalen, since you got the exciting news, you know, we got the multifamily purchase coming up. Uh, I just like to keep in touch with you, man. I need to, I need you to put your cell number in the chat too, because I was trying to get in touch with you this past week. And uh, there's another Jalen in the group that I was messaging. It wasn't you. So please uh, put your number in the chat and give everybody an update. How, how is the multifamily purchase coming along? Uh, I, I signed this agreement this past week uh, letting me know what my mortgage is going to be. I just haven't got my closing date yet. I got the appraisal bought and the inspection back. I sent some stuff back for him to uh, fix before I uh, purchased it, though. But I'm waiting on the closing date now, though. Did he agree? Did he agree to uh, to make the repairs? Uh, I sent it uh, Friday. My real estate ain't told me nothing yet. Okay. So okay. I don't know if he's agreed yet. Okay, good deal, good deal. Hopefully he will. Hopefully he will. Anybody got any questions for uh for Jalen? Jalen's doing a he's doing a uh, home hack. He's buying a four unit building. He intends to live in one of the units, and uh, he is buying a four unit building. This is his first 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 property that he's buying. So anybody got any questions for him? Uh, no, somebody might have a question for him. He's he's taking action. See what y'all got. Are they uh, currently tenants in the other unit, Jalen? Yeah, they all rented out right now. I'm gonna have to raise the rent to uh, seven seventy five to get what I want out of it. It's at five fifty right now, so hopefully they stay. If not, I believe I can get it rented out quick. They some nice apartments. They are. They in a good location too, Jalen. Yes, sir. It's like you know, behind Tom Big, you know, out there on Auburn Road. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Back in that little quiet area right there. Thanks for that sale number two. Perfect. I'm gonna text you right now so I have it in my phone. What's uh, Jalen? What's your numbers on? If you don't mind sharing, like purchase price and all other stuff, kind of what the plans are. Oh, they wanted three nineteen for it. I offered two ninety, and they counted with two ninety five for the what? Settled it. I'm purchasing two ninety five. And Jalen, they're all uh, they're all two bedroom, one bath. Yes, sir. Um, Eight hundred square feet a piece. Yeah. So, yep. Front so, and back porch. So in our market, you think you could get eight hundred a month? You think, or seven fifty? What you think? Yes, sir. Sure. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Basically, you get to live without a without a rent payment, y'all. That's just exciting. He gets to to live without a rent payment. His tenants will be paying for the other units, but they'll also be making his his mortgage payment. So that's just more money he can save, more money he can invest. And that might be the right word to use. Very excited for you, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for sharing those details. What else we got going going on? It's exciting. It's Monday. I want to hear what we got going on. What we got? Somebody got some exciting. I see Jaron in the room. I see Isaac. Good to see you, Isaac Grant, man. Good to see you back in the room. Hear your voice, uh, Jennifer Miller, uh, Julian. I see Lorena in the house. Uh, Paul, good to see you as always. Paul, Ramon is in the building. Samir is in the building. William Fox, we got a number of our members, group members today that are going to a mastermind. They went to, uh, to a mastermind in South Carolina, jumped on a boat fishing, which I wish I could go, but I couldn't, I couldn't go this time. 
but we have a number of people that that checked in and said they were going to be out there. So we're gonna we're live on Facebook for them. Say hi to uh, Eugene, uh, Mike Izzo. I know John. I think John Evans, Yaden, gonna be out on the boat. Uh, trying to think of who else might be out there that I remember. If I forgot you, don't blame me. I just I just forgot this time. Hey Floyd. Floyd, back back in the room tonight after a great week last week, bringing some valuable content. If you did not see last week's Monday Night Mastermind, Floyd and some of his partners came on. They talked about automation, systems, going big with your automation and systems. So good to see Floyd in the room as well. All right. So let me tell you all what happened to me this morning. Since, since y'all being kind of quiet, somebody's thinking about something they want to share, like a deal or got something like that. Let me show y'all what happened to me this morning. Let me see if I can see if I can get to my desktop here. Y'all know I like to tell y'all all my business. All right. So something happened to me this morning. Somebody emailed me. Somebody emailed me early this morning. I hope I hope this hope we can find it because I, sometimes I can't find stuff. Twelve unit. Maybe we'll find it this morning. Oh, there it is. Boom. All right. So somebody, somebody, uh, where it went? Did it go somewhere? There it is. Okay. Somebody emailed me this morning. Don't be reading my emails, y'all. My business. All right. Now, somebody, somebody messaged me this building this morning. Okay. And it is a, uh, it says it's in Beaumont, Texas. I get these emails all the time. Y'all can see over here in my email chat. I get, I get all, all, all kind of emails all the time. But this one right here is, is a, is a 199,000. All right. Now I'm gonna tell you how I thought when I saw this email this morning, I was like, okay, 199,000. Uh, let's look at what it is. Okay. 12 unit apartment complex. Can y'all see my screen? Yeah. All right. Now somebody might say, well, John, why are you buying in Beaumont, Texas? I don't own anything in Beaumont, Texas, but if I just pull up my little calculator right here and I do 199,000, divided by 12, I see that's $16,000, $16,500 per door. Y'all see my calculator too? Yeah. Okay, this is how I'm thinking in my head. I'm like, okay, $16,000 a door. I don't get many of those that I get to look at. So they got my attention. I'm gonna move down further. So I start looking, okay, now I see the unit mix. Okay, I see uh, one bedroom, one bedroom, one bedroom, one bedroom. Okay, now I'm seeing some twos, which I like twos. I like twos a whole lot more than I like ones. So I keep looking. All right, so she, they got my attention. They got some photos in here. None of this scares me. Roof needs replacement, duh, at that price, right? Foundation needs attention, probably so at that price. All right, I'm looking for properties like this. I look for distress. So I get excited. I start clicking on the photos. We won't click on the photos. But I text Holly, y'all. Now, Holly, sorry, hopefully nobody will text you and, and ask for proof of this, but Holly and I start, uh, uh, no, I don't even think I text her this morning. I sure didn't. I caught her on the phone. I caught her on the phone. And I did my usual spiel. Hey, I'm John Crutchfield. What if you could sell this property on this call right now? That's what I told her, okay? What if you could sell the property on this phone call right now? You got a cash buyer. Um, you don't have to have any showings, sight unseen. Like, what is your price right now? And you know what she said? She said, well, actually, this might be good timing. She said, what, um, what, what do you mean by cash? Okay. Now, what is she doing when she asked me that? What is she, what is she doing? Anybody know? She's betting you. She's betting me, right? She's also telling me that she's willing to accept less than that 199 just by asking a question, right? Um, I think I might have asked her, are you a realtor? I probably vetted her first, right? I probably asked her, are you a realtor? Do you have a contract on this? She told me I am the owner of the property. This is mine. I've owned it since February, right? So I got peaked up because I'm talking to the owner. It's not a middleman. I'm excited. So she starts betting me. What, what kind of cash is it when you say cash, right? She's like, is it hard money? Is it a credit line? You got to go get the money on. I'm answering her questions, right? She says to me, well, I really need you to give me a number because I cannot tell you how, how low I can go. 
And I said, look, I really don't want to tell you a number because I might insult you, but you can take the property out of your email right now if you're willing to sell it and just give me a deal. You ready to get out of it? And she's like, I'm ready to get out of it. And I said, well, would 100K do it? Okay, now, for those of you that are new to this, okay, John's talking numbers with the lady. He hasn't seen the property, true. Um, and for those people on Facebook, I will say something that you probably have heard before, but I really mean this. You can mitigate almost all of your risk if you buy the property at an extreme discount, okay? Yeah. For those of you who have not flipped properties, done renovations, William Fox would probably agree with me on this. Everything on a property can be repaired, okay? And I've, I've run into one issue lately that I would say <laughs> this is scaring me to death, but almost everything on a property can be fixed, right? It just costs money. It just costs money, time. You got to find the skilled people that know how to do it, okay? So a lot of times, you know, if I'm making a cash offer sight unseen like this, it's because I know that other people are going to see the value. I know that somebody else is going to buy the property and I don't want somebody else. She just sent this email out to 100,000 people or something, right? I want to, I got her on the phone. So um, my risk there is like, I'm mitigating my risk by asking for a cheaper purchase price to where I can fix anything and all of the definite things that end up going wrong. Because remember, I didn't show you all the photos. This, this property is pretty rough, okay? Um, so whenever you hear people say you make your money when you buy, it is definitely true. Obviously, you probably don't need to be making sight unseen offers if you're just getting into this. And as always, we need to say everything we talk about on our channel is uh, for entertainment purposes. We're not giving anybody any specific advice. Please don't follow anything and say that I told you to do it because we're all just talking real estate. Okay. Now, um, she says, could you come up to 125K? <laughs> she said, could you come up? And I said, well, I don't want to haggle on this call. I said, I don't want to haggle. I told you I have cash. I told you I'm serious. Um, I tell her, I want to sell it. I want you to take it down off the email, 100K. All right. She says, um, let me call you back, which made me think that she probably was going to have to make sure that she could do this with some partner or something. Okay. All right. So, of course, hang up. Um, I start texting some people getting excited, right? I started texting one of my private lender partners. Hey, you wanna go in on this? Like, I know that this is a great deal. The numbers are perfect. Um, and I start thinking like, when I talk to John, talk to one of my private lenders, he's like, why, what's the difference between 100 and 125K? It's like, what's the difference? You know, it's a great opportunity. The numbers are no different. And really what it ended up being is I was ended up being greedy, right? I was just trying to get it as cheap as possible. It's in my veins. Sometimes my dad's on here. He raised me to be like that, y'all. And that's just how it is. So um, ended up realizing that I probably should have said yes to 125K on the phone. Try to get her back on the phone. Can anybody guess what happened? Can anybody guess? Anybody guess? Someone snatched her on the phone. T tons of people, tons of people have now offered her 199. Tons of people have told her, hey, this is a deal. I'll buy it, right? I, I didn't get that one today, y'all. I promise y'all, this happened before 8 o'clock this morning. What time this email came in? Let me see. Well, it's say 925, but that was, it, was it 925? Okay, it was 925. I'll tell the truth. So it happened before 10 o'clock this morning, Okay. Um, and that is, is sometimes how fast they move when they're actually an opportunity. And I did a few other things that I didn't really discuss tonight. You know, I, I, I zillowed the property. I did a street view, an aerial view. Um, I looked at some other metrics that I like to look at for rent, go to rent on them or so you can see what the average rents are in the area. Um, I called city hall to make sure that it was zoned as a multifamily property in the area to make sure that it wasn't like a legal 12 unit. So I did some of those things that I didn't discuss that are some typical due diligence, but 
that was my adventurous uh, before 10 a.m. this morning with a project. And somebody else really did buy it, or at least has it under contract now. So I, I did check back with her a few times today. <laughs> Are you sure? Are they serious? <laughs> but um, lost, lost the opportunity there. So anyways, that's my story. Anybody else got anything exciting to share before we talk about some financing do's and don'ts? Anybody got anything else going on? Maybe you got a deal you want to talk about, project you're working on. We always open the floor in the room. I see Richards come in. I see Lakeisha Nelson. Hey, lady. Good to see you as well. Uh, Julian in the house. Good to see you too. Hey, Richard. Um, ooh, Richard, my memory. Hold on. Hold on. Sade is your, I think your wife's name is Sade. See, tell her I haven't heard from her in about three to six months. So I'm forgetting her name. We need to hear from Sade. Is that right? I think it's Sade. Am I right, Richard? Yeah, you're right. Got it. Good. Richard and Sade, y'all, they they are uh, uh, condo, condo flippers and renovators. Um, kind of exciting. So uh, anyways, anybody got anything else? I'm going to open the floor. What y'all got going on? Let's talk real estate. something go for it <laughs> well i i want to have something i saw uh, a post in your um in your group Ooh, we having trouble hearing y'all y'all having trouble hearing her too about i think it was 20 doors in west virginia Hey, Lakeisha, you you going yeah. on? You, you going uh, but in? I, but I saw that and was like, "What's the Uh, I'm driving. I have to ask later. I'm in a bad area. Hey, okay. I think I heard a little bit of what you said. Yes, there was a post. Jimmy Thorpe. Jimmy Thorpe is um, he's actually one doing the mastermind today in South Carolina. Jimmy Thorpe posted a a 20 unit multifamily property. It's somewhere in West Virginia. Um, I, I did look at the numbers on the deal this morning. Uh, if you've got capacity bandwidth, if you want to do a deal out of state, uh, that one, the numbers did look okay. Um, I did talk to Jimmy about it. There's, there's quite a bit of work that needs to be done. It's completely vacant, number one. Um, it does have some asbestos. Uh, what do you call it when you have to abate, abatement? You have to get rid of asbestos in that one. Um, but the rents and the market seem strong. Uh, it's, it is a smaller area, smaller location. So you need to have your financing figured out on that one. But yes, I did see it. So if you have interest in that, um, it, the details are in the group. And Jimmy, I know, know him well enough, talk to him well enough. About an hour away from West Virginia, Samir says. So you looked at it. Okay, Lakeisha says it's in a bad area. Oh, you're in a bad area. <laughs> Yeah, you're in a bad area with with the the sound, but we we heard we heard enough of what you said to to piece piece it together a little bit. Oh, wait a minute, Samir says he's about an hour away from West Virginia. Interesting. Hey, Samir, we need to talk about this deal. If you want to work, if you want to put some work together, I don't want to do it. I'm telling you, I don't I don't want to do it. Um. And I got some intimate details on the project just because Jimmy and I talked. So if somebody's really passionate about it, Lakeisha, Samir, y'all, let's get on a Zoom call one day. Let's let's figure out if y'all want to do something on it. Yeah, let's do it. But it's a, it's a it's a uh, it's it's whenever you do a totally vacant property, it's it's risky. And how did how do we just talk about mitigating risk? Anybody know? Buy it cheap. Hmm, buy yeah. no discount. Like cheap. Cheap. I'm just saying. Um, if it's gonna be vacant, it needs to be it needs to be cheap, cheap. So um, I know he's gonna have a lot of he's gonna have a lot of interest in it. Um, and his price is not crazy. I think you could probably fix it. You, you know, you're probably looking at let's just say if we say 20 a door times 20 doors, what's that? 400,000? So 400,000 and then you got your purchase price of 350, 750. Then you're gonna have holding costs and all that stuff that you have when you're holding a property and there's no rent coming in. You gotta pay the interest, you pay the light bill, the water bill. You gotta pay all that stuff while it's empty with no tenants. Um, so let's just say you're all in for a million bucks 
and I don't know what his ARV was, but there's some room there. So if y'all get passionate about it, um, somebody take the lead and set up a call. I don't have to be involved. It sounds like Samir is close. Samir, did you look at that one? No, I haven't yet. Okay. It's in the feed on the, the Wealth and Real Estate Facebook group channel. And Jimmy's a good guy. He, uh, he, 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 would be, he has a lot of details on it as well. Um, he's totally and open and transparent with the issues that are going on with the property too. So yeah, I, sure. I sent him a I sent him a, a message to get more information on it. But like you said, he's leading a group tonight, so I'm sure he'll follow up um, tomorrow. We had a pretty good relationship on the uh, my multi uh, first million and multifamily, so um, I'll reach out to him tomorrow too. Yes, um, definitely. Um, he's open. I think it's a two day, it might be a two day mastermind. It may be, I could be wrong. It could be two or three days, um, oh. but um, I do have some details. So just y'all set up, set, set up something. Maybe we can get Jimmy in a room Thursday or Friday. And if y'all are serious, serious, serious about it. I mean, it's 20 units, you know. I, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. yeah, you don't, you don't know the book. You use a big fish out there. Lakeisha is with it. <laughs> Let's go, hey, look, baby. Let's go. Look, look, so totally, total transparency. My thinking on it was y'all see my board back there that's been full for months, and I'm trying to get everything closed that I got to get closed. <laughs> and then my, my thinking on it was like, okay, it's totally vacant and it's only 20 units. That's really what I was thinking. And it's in West Virginia, exactly. which, you know, I didn't think about the fact that Samir was down the street. But hey, you know, that's how it be sometimes. So that's why it takes teams to do multifamily. Cause yes, see, yes. I, I, no, can get, I can get the money, I get the loans. So if we need to figure that out, we can, hey. we can figure that out. Um, exactly. fact, what type of deals are you buying right now, anyways, yourself? Um, right now, like I'll just go down the list. I got, I got uh, one single family house. Um, I'm buying for 55,000 cash, which is, you know, just cash. And then I've got another house I'm seller financing from the same guy. So it was kind of like a two for one deal, right? Like I'm gonna pay you cash for one, you seller finance me the other one. Um, I got a commercial deal, 29,000 square feet. I'm picking up for 200,000 bucks. This is kind of cool because it's seller financed, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. Um, Commercial deal, uh, multi-tenant, $775,000 project. This one is um, kind of a business expansion project that I'm working on right now. Uh, four house package, 400K, four houses together. Family members, their uh, dad died and they're all splitting up, uh, splitting it up. That one I've been working on for a couple months actually because because the dad died and he didn't have a will, somebody's gonna see this on Facebook, y'all. Please have a will. Because yeah, the dad died, and he didn't have a will. There's four children. There's four children. None of them agree on nothing. And um, the judge is having to get all the properties appraised, figure out what they're worth, and then the judge gets to make the decision as to what happens because none of these people can agree. So. Wow have a will you know that taught me to have a will um on this one but i'm st it still looks like i'm gonna get a pretty good pretty good deal because uh what they are praised for and what 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 i do think they're gonna have some consensus on is is uh it's still a good number and then um five 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 unit package for three hundred thousand, uh all rented from the same seller so i'm trying to buy like these bigger packages of, of things all these yeah. are single family. None of it's multifamily. That's just how it's happening right now. Um, I'm not having to chase them. I'm not having to like fight and bid against all these other people right now. So that's that's where I'm staying right now. Yeah, um, that's how we're getting some of our deals too. We're buying from this guy that has like 13 million in assets and stuff. And he wants to sell all off his assets in, in that particular area. So we're like, well. Yes, yes. I know a lot of people, Josh Harms, good to see you in the group tonight. I know like um, a lot of folks like that are doing multi deals, like some, everybody thinks like, okay, our two main jobs are to find money and to find deals. 
And yeah. everybody thinks like you have to find all these investors or you have to find all of these sellers, but you can find like one investor and eat forever, or you can find one, like one owner and just buy from him as much as you want if you find the right one, right? Yeah. So totally true. Like the networking, you just never know. One conversation could change, could change everything. Um, one of these guys that I'm buying some of these from, I've been buying from since 2016. He won't sell it all to me at once, but I just keep him, keep talking to him. Every now and then he calls me and he says, do you want some more? And it's a great relationship. So that's what's up right there. That's, that's that consistent flow. Uh, we're trying to get more, more people like that for ourselves. We only have like one person we're doing it from right now, but we, we think it's going to be consistent deal flow for at least a couple of years for me. Yeah. So the, the tough part about it is that the first, the first deal he did with me, it was a big one. It's a million plus. And now when he, and it was seller financed, right? I know I like that one. Seller finance. Yeah, but plus. now he's gotten wised <laughs> up because when we did that project, he's seen all of the appreciation that's happened since I bought them. And now he's like, well, no, if you're going to buy them from me, you just need to buy them. I don't want to finance them because I'm going to feel bad every time I see the values if I would have just kept it. So <laughs> now when he tells me something, he's like, you got to pay cash for it. <laughs> that COVID appreciation kicked you in the ass because of that. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. I know. Hey, Jalen, Jalen, me, me too, man. I love when we do these rooms. Um, I love the diversity in the room. Good to see people jumping in tonight as well. This is something I look forward to. I had a had a contractor that wanted to be paid tonight and it's a new guy that we never used before so he didn't know our system and he was rushing me to get a check tonight and I was I felt bad because I was like okay I'm gonna be late but I was able to make it so I'm glad I was able able to make it um anybody got anything else before we talk about some some do's and don'ts financing um we've had a couple of weeks where we had some guests so for those of you that are tired of my voice um, we have had a couple of weeks where we had some guests. Remember, we had Murray Cullum come on and talk about healthy eating, healthy, uh, being healthy as a, an investor, how that can impact your life, your productivity. And then last week, Floyd hung and uh, Jeff, I think Jeff came on uh, last week. So uh, we have had a break from me, but I thought I'd share a little bit tonight, just some financing do's and don'ts. Um, and a little bit about my strategy going forward because of what I've learned when it comes to financing real estate. Anybody got anything else you want to share before we jump into that? I want to make sure if you have something, if you have a deal, you have an opportunity, you want to jump in just like Lakeisha did, like let's let's get that out there. Good to see my pops, John Crutchfield. We need to interview him one day, y'all. We need to do a rich dad, poor dad interview with my dad. Uh, <laughs> one week, see if I get him. See if I can get him. He probably would do it too. Hey, anybody got anything else before we chat about this? Hey, uh, I should hit you up in a message about it. It just came to my mind and stuff. If you come across any hotels, Johnson, let me know. One of my mentors, he has like eight hotels right now and he's looking for more. That's his whole goal right now is acquisitions of hotels because COVID um, created a lot of opportunity in that sector. Yes. Yes, it did. It did. And a lot of a lot of banks are still a little bit squeamish on on the motels, but I have met some or hotels, but I have met some uh, some investors and some lenders that are still looking for them. So, boy, I will keep yeah. that in mind for sure. Yeah, Tim Vest went through Mike Ely's thing. The whole you know who Mike Ely is the apartment investing secrets guy. Yes, him and Nate Barger are partners. Yeah, yeah, I'm connected with Nate and stuff. So I got Nate's cell phone number. On. He's my he's my one of my mentors. So. <laughs> Look, that's a good mentor to have. He he uh he intimidated me one day. I called him and he, I texted him through Messenger and I said, "Hey, here's my number." And uh, he just called me right then, <laughs> and he was like making it. I was making an introduction, and he was just like, "What's your what's your EBITDA or something like that?" And I was like, "Shoot, I got to Google that. What's EBITDA?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he blows my mind. I was talking this to him about private. Ago. Yeah, private capital raise. Yeah, he blows yeah. my mind, dude. I've seen him before uh, Super Bowl in Inglewood. We went and had breakfast together. So it was nice. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What else we got? Anybody else got anything else? Maybe you had a burning question that you wanted to ask folks about. Um, sh shoot the question out. Somebody might have a something. If you have something you're looking for, like 
you know, you're, you, you got, look, we got 20 people, 16 people, we got some people watching on YouTube as well, Facebook, like ask what you need. Like, this is why we do this group because somebody in the room may be able to help you with what you need. Somebody got a deal, you need money. Somebody got money, you're looking for a deal. Like, let's put it out there. There's these special meetings and stuff. I actually stumbled upon it and I didn't even know that they existed the other day and stuff. They're called exchanger meetings, dude. And they're like live horse trading events, dude. You put your services up there, your deals, whatever. The, and everyone just does that for about an hour so that it gets on the board. And everyone trades back and forth money, 401ks, deals. It's, it's crazy. I think you froze, Johnson, bro. That is great. <laughs> hey, am I froze? Okay. All right. Let's just talk then. Let's talk about do's and don'ts of financing, some financing don't, do's and don'ts. Um, maybe let's start it off like this way. Like, I guess if you don't believe in debt, like you probably don't want to watch this whole thing because a lot of this assumes that you're okay with debt. Um, I actually think that's on my list of dues. Oh, that is on my list. So we could just start. Let me share my screen here. See Josh coming back in. Let's see. Um, here we go. And I'm going to be typing and adding to this list as we talk because I know y'all are going to have some more stuff that we can add. Okay. Um, but actually, that's my first thing on my list, like as a do of this conversation, right? Is like consider leverage as your friend. Anybody have like a, a good example of how leverage or borrowing has benefited them when it comes to buying assets? Anybody? Anybody have a good it's example? Always, it's always great. All right. You think about regular businesses all the time, right? They take consignment of product, right? So if they're willing to take on product, right, or, or at a loan, right, it's the same thing. You need to leverage everything you can, right? When, whether it's business credit your private relationships. Um, if you're doing it for things that are not asset-based, it's just a, a liability. So, I mean, with me, I have consignment of soil right now. We have like $12 million worth of soil in Minnesota. That's like 38% organic living material to like 99% that's tested. And we're trying to move that to nurseries. It's the same thing about, about finance, right? You have to leverage what you can. Right, and that came from a company that builds ponds. They're just like, what are we going to do with all this soil? Let's sell it. So like almost all the companies that you see that are successful, that are thriving, even the largest companies in America or in the world, right? If we think of Amazon or we think of Apple, all of these companies are leveraging money, right? Even though they might be sitting on billions of dollars of cash, they're also leveraging, they're financing their way to growth, right? And this is kind of a key principle, you know, if you're still like, you know, using credit to buy furniture or using credit to buy a car that you're using to impress other people, that's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about leverage to buy assets, to buy things that pay for um, themselves, to buy things that actually generate cash flow. Consider that that can be your friend, right? Um, but it can also be a tremendous like weapon that can hurt you if you're not committed to using it as an asset, right? So that's the first to do, right? If you're still not convinced about financing, like don't think about it like you have to finance 100% of something or you have to finance 75% of something. You can finance 25% and still... Um, see some of the benefits from leverage, right? To be able to use other people's money or to use the bank's money to grow your assets um, can be really beneficial. I'm going to give an example, okay? Um, and I wish I had, I wish I had a way I could draw on the screen, y'all. I probably can if I could figure it out. Okay, so here's a great example of this. Um, I had a guy who. And I don't think I know how to do this, so I'm, I might leave it alone. Let's see what happens. I'll try to draw. It won't let me draw with my finger. I had a guy who last year, he came to me. He did not have a, um, let me see. Now, how do I turn off drawing? <laughs> um, I had a guy who came to me. He did not have any retirement whatsoever, right? He didn't have, he was working. He had been a bartender. 
He had been a uh, truck driver. He had drove a beverage company, all this stuff. But he was 39 years old. I think he's 38. No retirement, no 401k, nothing. If he continued on that path, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Social Security may or may not be around. Like he would have to rely on Social Security at retirement. And like nobody really wants to rely on something that we don't know will be there, right? Um, what he ended up doing was deciding that he needed to get some type of retirement. And so he bought one rental property. I'm going to give you the example of leverage, okay? He bought one four-unit rental property, okay? And the units rent for $1,000 a month. I wish I could draw this out. So for those people that are not like, voice learners, write this down, right? Four units, okay? $1,000 per month, okay? He, um, he bought one rental property, okay? And somebody might ask, well, how did he pay for the rental property? Because he didn't have any money, right? He didn't have any retirement. He actually borrowed the money from his parents, okay? Don't step into that world where you're like, okay, I, don't, I can't get it from my parents. Well, he borrowed it from somebody. So you have to be resourceful if you don't have that as an option, right? A lot of us don't have that as an option. So we, we borrow from whoever we can, right? He borrowed it from his parents. He bought a rental, rental property, four units, $1,000 per unit, okay? And the property is gonna end up being worth $400,000. I'm using very round numbers so we can see how leverage can be our friend, okay? If he does nothing else, if he does nothing else for the next 15 years, okay, if he just lets that property pay for itself, if he lets the tenants pay down his loan, okay, if he doesn't buy any other properties, he doesn't sell this property, he just uses the, the leverage of being able to buy a $400,000 piece of property, okay, in 15 years, just simple math, if we don't do anything else, he'll have a $400,000 asset he could sell for retirement purposes, right? And he'll have $4,000 a month coming in for retirement that he can use. All paid for by the people that are living in the unit, okay? So this is a very simple example. I always get in trouble when I use simple examples. There's all kinds of factors that go into this, but hopefully you get my point. Like in one transaction, he's able to change his retirement picture. Um, and this is important for those folks who think, well, based on what stage of life I'm in, I can't create progress. Like if you're older, you can create progress. If you're younger, you can create progress. Leverage can be your friend, especially if you're buying an asset that pays for itself. Um, it can be cool. Any comments, any thoughts about this one as we just kind of hit that principle before we talk about, about these others here? Questions about that? All right, so you, I'm gonna push. Yeah, go ahead. What, like, you can create leverage in all kinds of ways. Say you're already leveraging yourself, right, through credit means and things like that, right? And like our partnership, we've started to uh, bring on people that we previously worked with because, like, we come from blue collar background. Yep. And we're um, trying to put them through the same type of rounds and teach them the same things we've done so that we can then leverage their credit without them taking any actual risk onto themselves or actually having to open up their wallet. I mean, right? That's Absolutely. Another, another way. Yeah, I was at, I was at, I stopped through a meetup this weekend. And of course, it was one of those meetups where they give you some free information, a lot of free information actually that you can put into use if you're ready to do that. But at the end, they sell a course, right? They sell a product. Well, at the end, like he makes it so easy because not only will he sell you his product, but he'll actually finance it for you, right? So you could get his course and get it financed. And he makes it easy because he's leveraging, like he's allowing you to leverage into his course and into his community. So it's all kind of ways to do it um, for sure. I've all right, never so, heard that before. That's really that's really good. That's yeah. a smart way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 brilliant if you really think about it. Like 
you know, if you present somebody with this course or this opportunity and the, the, the financial barrier seems too high for them and then you create the finance plan, you probably increase your rate of adoption, I, I would imagine. So yeah, I anyway, see you headed in that same direction, Johnson, is like a, as like possibly going in the same direction as Jenny's and Eden. And like me and Mark have been thinking about some stuff like that. I think about funnels and stuff a lot. We got to connect a little more after some other time, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, those, those of you super close to me, they know like education is a passion of mine. Um, real estate has changed my life. It's changing my life on a daily basis. Just how I think, who my network is. Um, I love sharing content information with folks. Um, I struggle a little bit with sales and figuring out like how to value time and stuff like that. So it's coming. We just got to figure it out, Floyd. Maybe you can help me, but I know it's coming. It's all that teamwork, brother. <laughs> yeah, it's coming though. Okay. All right. Let's talk about some dues. All right. Start paying attention to your credit. I think this is a great financing due. Um, if you're not paying attention to your credit, you're making a mistake. Okay. Start paying attention to your credit. This, the most subtle way you can do this, right, is to start thinking about your credit as an asset, as a tool that when you're ready to use it can be available, okay? I know for me, like, and y'all, my dad's on the call, so I can tell y'all, and he can say I'm lying if I ain't telling the truth. But like, I'm gonna give y'all a good example. My dad, when he taught me to pay bills, like, he would tell me, okay, when's the due date? When do you pay the bill, y'all? Y'all know when you pay the bill? Five to 10 days before it's due. Ooh, see? Let's see, if my, <laughs> let's see if my dad answered this question as soon as you get it <laughs> all right no it's not as soon as you get it it was it was on the due date okay why why am i paying it on the due date because i get to use my money all the way up until the due date right that was the that was what i was that was what i was taught or at least that's what i took from it y'all know because sometimes we take things from our parents that we didn't actually get now i took that to the extreme and I'm being totally transparent. I took that to the extreme. I would wait until the creditor called me for the payment. <laughs> yeah, That's so if I just do that, I'm going to wait until they <laughs> call me. And then I know, well, every now and then, guess what happens? You miss the payment or you miss the phone call. And now you're not paying attention to your credit. And you got 30 day late on your credit. Okay. Um, That's just one example of like not paying attention to it. Another example is just like not getting any credit. Like, I don't want to be involved in that. I don't, you know, believe in that. I don't want to pay any interest. So I don't want to. I came from a super fearful background of credit, bro. Like my family told me growing up, debt is bad. I grew up around drug dealers and all that stuff. Too, so debt was bad. Debt got you in trouble. Debt got you hurt. Right. So yeah, and it, can. it took it me can. A, lot of, a lot of work to get myself to be willing to like mess with all the, all the business credit and all that type of stuff. <laughs> it, it, it can and it can certainly uh it can certainly hurt us right but you start paying attention to it by like you can sign up for like just free credit services that'll give you like a credit report and you don't even have to worry about like in the beginning your credit number might not mean anything to you but a lot of these services like credit karma or my fico they will send you educational material that helps tell you like this is what makes up your score or this is what to do this is what not to do this is why your score is low right now or this is why it's high start paying attention to that information because this is a part of financing um and frankly like if you can figure out how to finance things it can tremendously like move you forward in growing your your real estate company one of the reasons, like when people ask me, okay, how do you get so many deals closed? It's because when I'm talking to a seller, and this is happening more and more lately as I figured out some of these other types of financing, like when you're not thinking about where the money's going to come from, you are such a better negotiator, right? When you're not thinking about how you're going to pay for something, you can be a much better negotiator. And of course, just like anybody else, like I started off like saying, okay, I have a $15,000 credit card limit and I think I can get access to some of that. So that's what I would offer in the beginning. As you learn 
and you pay attention to your education, you start figuring out you can finance things in multiple different kinds of ways. Um, and that becomes a tool as well. So just start paying attention to your credit. Um, I love to say like the most important thing you can do for your credit today, if you do nothing else, is just pay your bills on time. Like it cannot be an option to pay bills late. It cannot be an option to let negative things hit your credit report um, because that is just kind of like the, the starting point that you want to be paying bills on time and showing people that you can manage your, your credit responsibly. Okay. Yeah. There's one little tip that I want to drop in there is that, that I was taught by the, the people who taught me how to build my credit is to fucking keep a, at least a 10% balance rolling on the card. It shows them you can manage the debt better. You're using it. It shows that you're yeah. using it for sure. All right, the next one, the next do, have the following documents on hand. You'll get asked for them all of the time. And if you like me, I didn't have most of this stuff. Um, but when you're, when you're getting finance, sometimes it just helps to have a personal financial statement, right? If you don't have one of these, you can Google personal financial statement template, right? Or you can just ask your bank the next time you go in to make a deposit, can I have a template of a personal financial statement? But what that is, is it just shows what your assets are and what your liabilities are. And when you compare your assets to your liabilities, that's how you come up with your net worth, okay? So it's very important when you're getting financing to, to know like, do I owe more than I have assets for, okay? Um, because as your net worth increases, your ability to finance things will increase as well. Uh, you need to have your tax returns on hand. Right. Um, and I put a little note. Oh, I put this in the next section. Like you're going to have to have your tax returns. I know a lot of times we don't want to have tax returns. Um, just just you, you're going to need to have your tax returns. So you want to keep those up to date and keep those filed. Um, a rent roll is always something that they ask for. Like if you own properties, you want to start keeping track of how much are they rented for? How much do you owe on the property? And I keep these in, uh, in little Excel spreadsheets. Every time I buy a property, I add the property to what's called a rent roll. So when the bank asks me for this, I can just send it to them, right? It's a real quick thing of me saying, hey, here's my rent roll. And if you use tools like uh, Microsoft, uh, I think, I don't know, Microsoft Word, or if you use, I use Google Sheets. When you update it in one place, it's in the cloud. So every time you're updating it, it's everywhere and you can keep track of, of these documents. There's some other documents that banks normally ask for, but I may not have put them in here. So somebody help me fill this in. What else they might ask for? Anybody know? I feel like that's a short list. There might be some other stuff. I don't think about that. Anybody got any other ones? I guess whether you've had a bankruptcy or not. They might, they might ask for a credit report. You know, maybe you need to have like a soft pull of your credit report using one of these services. I've never, they might ask if you've had bankruptcy. I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, show up on your credit report. And a lot of times they will ask for, you know, they'll ask you, do you know what your credit score is? Like, so you want to have an idea about what your credit might look like. Um, but here's a cool thing. Like, don't be intimidated by your credit score. Um, I have literally seen people get approved for a million dollar loans with under a 650 score, right? Um, so the score itself is not the only thing. You shouldn't be deterred just because of the score. Um, you should be thinking about, am I paying my bills on time? That's the number one, right? You can get approved by convincing a banker that you're a good bet based on your recent payment history, right? So that's something to consider. Um, but I'll think about more documents that I've been asked for. Mostly personal financial statement, two years of tax returns is usually what they want. Um, I don't usually get asked for bank statements unless it's a big loan. And I go to a different bank if they ask me for bank statements because I just, I just, I just don't like when they ask for that. Two years. You have a brokerage account that they like to see that shit too. Liquidity. They like, they like to see that you have cash or that you could get cash. If, if the bigger the loan gets, they like to see that. And that's something that's going to be on your personal financial statement too. So you're going to put that on there. It's like how much cash you have, how much stocks if you've got, if you've got stocks, if you've got crypto, if you've got, they want to see all of that. Um, all right. Ooh, do. I learned this one a few years ago. 
you do have to pay enough taxes to be bankable, okay? So once you quit your job or if you have an entrepreneurial type of job, if you have a job, a business where you can flex the income a little bit, y'all know how things happen. Um, you do actually have to show enough income to stay bankable. If you write off too much or you don't show enough, it could hurt your ability to finance. And a great CPA or a great uh, relationship with your community banker, like they will help you know what that number needs to be, right? You could send them a draft of your tax return before you actually file it and say, Is, am I showing enough income to remain bankable? And you can learn this the hard way and have to wait a few years um, to update your tax returns, or you can just <clears throat> think about it this way. And uh, no politics here. Okay, no politics. But guess what? Like, paying taxes is actually a sign, like, that you are making money, right? So if you do have to pay a few taxes, it's okay, right? Um, it's definitely okay. We won't, we don't want to pay more than we need to pay. But if you're having to pay taxes, that's a good problem versus having to pay no taxes at all because you don't have any income would be a bad problem. Okay, let me just leave that there. Um, all right, ask other investors. Oh, this is a good one. Do. That's William Fox, ain't it? Let me see. I can't see y'all pictures today. Don't forget to go on mute because I think somebody doing some work on the channel. All right, um, do. Ask other investors local to a market how they are financing their deals. This one was good for me, right? If you're going to finance something, like call another investor that you know is buying and ask them how are they financing their deals? Or you can ask them, how would you finance this? This will give you like some good financing tips as well. Um, if you're buying with a realtor, for example, I don't know if Jalen did this, but if you're buying with a realtor, you can ask the realtor, do you know of a good bank that I can use? Or do you know of a good lender that I can use? Um, or just ask other investors like how they're financing their deals. They will gladly, in most cases, share their bank with you, their lenders, um, not private lenders, but they'll usually share like if it's a bank relationship, they'll usually share that with you um, for sure. Um, Josh, would you tell, is Josh still on here? I don't think he's, I can't see this. On the screen. Yeah, I'm here, man. Would you tell another investor in your market, like how, like how you're financing your stuff? I know you're seller financing a lot of stuff too, but, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a problem telling mine, but you know, telling investor that, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Most of the time what I do, um, I find out who the seller is, um, financed yep. with. Ooh, because gold. Gold. because the biggest thing about it is is that bank really doesn't want to lose that note if it's a producing note and they know the property and so um, I found out that really honestly even though I don't bank there I might not have a relationship with that banker they have a relationship with the seller and they have a relationship yeah. with that property so they already know that property they know about that property they know what that property does and uh, usually it makes transaction a little bit smoother a little bit easier gold he just dropped there gold that's exactly what i did um on this this five five property package it's like ask the seller who's financing this for you right now and you go straight to the the that bank and say hey do you want to keep this loan right i'd love to keep this loan with you and a lot of times they do already have a relationship with the properties they know that the person's been paying on time so they they already have underwritten them in some cases it can save you money too because they might already have appraisals um, especially if it's a smaller community bank, sometimes this, and that's what we're talking about. Josh and I use small community banks in our, in our local areas. Okay. Um, last one for a do today, um, consider that there are multiple types of financing and that you don't have to like, you don't have to do it one way. That was really, um, uh, Brunchick, Brunchick's, um, meetup that I went to on Saturday morning. That was really like the core takeaway was that, you know, you can finance things all kinds of ways, right? So I put some of them down here. Of course, I love seller financing. That's when the seller actually lets you make payments to them over time to buy the property. Um, but you can also finance with private money from friends, family, uh, other folks that want to help you get deals done, social media friends, right? 
uh, traditional bank financing, of course. Um, but the one that we use a lot of times right now, we call it portfolio lending. Uh, these are small community banks in the area. They call it portfolio lending because the, the lenders actually keep the loans in their portfolio. And these can be like, they can break rules to, to lend you money in your local community bank. So a lot of times we say, just consider that there are multiple types of financing. Um, don't try to get a loan by yourself if you're just getting started, just financing. Like ask other investors, what would be the way to finance the deal? Because we're going to tell you like, don't go to Chase. <laughs> Don't go to Bank of America. Like they're not going to loan, they, they, they might loan you money depending on who you are, right? But I, I don't think they're going to loan, loan you money for an investment property until you get like apple size or something. So um, just consider that there are multiple types of financing for sure. I've got a few don'ts on here. Maybe y'all can help me add some. Hey, I know it's seven o'clock. So if you got to go, I know we got to go, but I'm going to finish this real quick. Don't use too much cash, right? Leverage is your friend. So if you can use, you know, if you can get some financing, 100% financing or 80% financing or whatever, try to keep some of your cash on hand. It's important not to use it. The more cash you have, the more liquid you are, you'll find that financing is easier as well. So just consider that. Um, keep yourself as liquid as possible uh, when you're trying to get financing. I know it like it defeats the point, right? Like I don't have any money. That's why I need financing. But the more liquidity you have, the more the banks will want to deal with you as well. If you can put money in your bank account, put money in account so they can see it, um, a lot of times it'll be easier to, to get leverage, okay, to, to finance things. Talked about not paying bills late. Uh, talked about paying a lender an upfront fee. Oh, yeah, don't do that. If you find a lender that wants an upfront fee, um, unless it's an appraisal, maybe, um, you, should, you should be cautious of that lender unless you got a referral from, from somebody else who's used them. So those are some don'ts that I have. And it's 703, so we had enough for tonight to talk about. Um, other thoughts before we jump off tonight? I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, wish we had more time on that one. Maybe we can do a part two next week of this one. Um, other, other thoughts before we break tonight? 7.03, I know some folks usually have to, to jump off right at 7, but we'll hang out for a second and just, just chit-chat if anybody has anything else. What else we got? Anybody else have anything else to talk about tonight? Hopefully this is, is somewhat helpful. Got some gems. Um. One of the ones that I, that took me a minute to learn and it's still taking me a minute to learn is the liquidity part of this, right? Like the more money that you have, <laughs> the easier it is to get financing, right? And if you can walk into a bank and you can drop, you know, $100,000 into a bank account, they're going to see you differently when you request that loan. It's just how it is, right? Then if you're asking to borrow money and you don't have any money. Right. And so um, I've had several mentors mention this to me. And um, sometimes you just have to keep banging your head against the wall until you get it. But that's that's one that I would say is like if you can keep your cash so you have some liquidity to show around when you're asking for lending, that is that is very important. Like I get about the banks, man, I, I need to start building more relationships with the local banks where I'm working. Yes. We we're doing a refi with Kogo on like this whole, on an eight unit, on eight eight uh, properties at once and stuff. And they're like super late on it. And it's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, that's kind of the process, you know, is like learning the different banks. People ask me in Tupelo, right? People ask me like, who, who do I bank with? All of them. Like, who do I, who do I have bank accounts with? Every one of them. Yeah, right? everybody. Everybody. I plan right. to have credit lines with every single bank in America, <laughs> credit union and bank. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Floyd, Floyd's on a whole nother level, y'all. But, but um, I mean, there might be 10 banks in Tupelo and I have a bank account every single one. Like I have loans from probably eight of, eight of the 10, right? So you, you're, you're definitely building relationships. You are um, figuring out which bank is good for what. Like Ramon and I, we use, we use a bank. Um, we, we have a lender relationship that, you know, the guy's just quick. He's hurried. He tells you he's going to do it. He's going to do it. We love him, but you can't max him out. 
right? So then sometimes we switch over to, you know, we might use our lender that's a little slower when it's a deal we know we don't have to get done very fast, yeah. right? Then we've got some lenders who want to see a certain amount of cash in the bank before they'll lend us anything. So you kind of get to know all of their, their little idiosyncrasies and, and it can be a tool for you for sure. Then now I'm starting to use some national lenders that are not local community banks. So there's a, a different, different kind of strategy when you're using those as well. So yeah, financing can be cool. Um, I think we may do a part two next week because um, we didn't have enough time, but that, that's, that's it for tonight. Anybody got anything else y'all want to share, deal you want to put out there? Um, anybody else got anything else? Hopefully uh, Jalen will have a closing date next week. Hopefully he will have a closing date. That's what I'm aiming for. I hope so. My real was telling me first week of June, so we're going to see. June, we have a new, new property. Yes, yes. All right. Well, nobody's got anything else. Thank you, Johnson, for another great meeting, man. Hey, no problem. I love these things. Hey, you being quiet today, Jennifer. I'm, I'm watching. Hopefully, this. I'll have clothing. <laughs> I'm watching. Hey, y'all closing on something in California soon, right, Leticia? Yes, we were supposed to close last week. I'm actually looking at a property right now. I'm getting ready to put an offer in today. But um, we were supposed to close last week, and and the people that um that bought it they um apparently bought it through a foreclosure so there's a lien that they had on there that hasn't been cleared and so we've just been having a tough time oh it's on the wrong way a tough time getting the uh getting it cleared so hopefully we'll be closing this week in the high desert? yes i'm in desert hot springs i'm looking at this this little house and i'm like oh. hey but i can put a Put, Hit me up. I'm in Riverside. Let's let's shop it up sometime. I'm in Riverside. Yeah, this, oh, cool. Yeah, I just passed right by you. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking at this. I'm going to put an offer in today. So, Lakeisha, I'm going to tell a story because I got a, a, got a second, but I'm going to tell a story. And it, okay, it, tell it, a story. It, Let me figure it, out how to turn this thing it around. Stuck, it, stuck, it stuck with me for a, a while. Okay. 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 Um, I, I own one apartment building, right? It's one big apartment deal. Everybody wants big apartment deals, right? I own one big apartment deal. And that that one deal, just to kind of tell you the story, that one deal is retirement for me, right? Like I don't have to work anymore. Right. But what's, let me turn this off because sometimes when I tell these stories, people <laughs> Y'all have to come in the Zoom room to get the stories. Y'all have a good night. But anyway,